I was still teaching high school English, one of my colleagues became what they call a pool teacher. That doesn't mean he was involved with kids swimming in a pool. He wasn't swimming in a pool. It's a metaphorical pool of teachers. And the district would call you in the morning and tell you which school to report to that day to be a substitute for the day. And he told me that every morning when that phone rang, he would pray that it was not a junior high school calling for an assignment. Why was that? Because junior high is hell. You have kids that are belong to all kinds of different cliques. They're going through all kinds of emotional and physical and hormonal changes. And it's just a big mess. And that brings us to today's episode. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today, a terrible and terribly funny coming-of-age story. Let's check it out. Today's film is Welcome to the Dollhouse from 1995, a brisk 87 minutes long in color. This uh, follows a few days in the life of a 11-year-old girl named Dawn Wiener, who the kids call Wiener Dog, as she deals with being picked on by basically everybody and also deals with living life in the New Jersey suburbs. Todd Solons was the director and writer for this film. It was only a second feature film and it won the Grand Jury Prize at the Sundance Film Festival in 1995. He's made a couple of other films since, most notably Happiness and Storytelling. He hasn't made a film since 2016. Um, he went to a New Jersey mall with his associates to try to find kids to cast in the film. He wanted very natural looking kids and normal looking kids to be in this. Didn't really work out. So instead he went through the traditional audition process and ended up with his star, Heather Matarazzo as a Don Wiener. She was 11 years old at the time. And I think it's one of the best child performances ever put on film. She's just fantastic in this film. And she's also in almost every scene, so she was working all kinds of hours way into the you know, 3, 4 in the morning, which the director says was most likely illegal, but her mother was there, so she knew what was going on. Now, I want to be upfront about this film. This is a dark comedy. So Dawn is a very awkward, unattractive girl. The way she stands, you know, physically, she's very awkward. She's got the big giant glasses on. Her mouth's kind of always hanging open. And um, her clothes, as you can see in this picture here, kind of uh, look like, as somebody said, out of somebody uh, out of something somebody would wear in a John Waters film. Pretty uh, mismatched and and just strange looking clothes. Um, she's picked on relentlessly by everyone in this film: the kids at school, the teachers, even her family. I mean, she's bullied. She doesn't even tell her family that she's getting bullied because she figures they're not going to help her anyways. And the original script was called The Middle Child, and that's what she is. She has a, a, a little sister who is very cute and spends most of the film prancing around in a pink tutu or ballerina outfit. And at one point, Dawn even looks at her while she's sleeping and says, you are so lucky because she's such a cute little kid. She's going to have everything go her way. She has an older brother who is a few years older, and he is like a Bill Gates lookalike, pretty nerdy guy, only concerned with uh, getting into a good college. Uh, late in the film, after everything she's been through, she says to her older brother, is high school better than junior high school? And he says, not really. They, they say stuff about you still, they just don't say it to your face, which sounds almost like real life, right? Um, but she's called names She's threatened, physically threatened. She's treated unfairly by a lot of people. Um, and then there's several incidents at school. The worst parts of any school, especially a junior high school, that you can think of, like the cafeteria. You walk in there, you got your tray of food. Everybody's in these cliques, a lot of noise, filled with kids. Where are you going to sit, right? Um, other dangerous areas at school could be um, the classroom itself. And the bathrooms could be really terrible. And even the hallways, too. All kinds of stuff can happen there, right? Um, so, But through it all, you know, she's dealing also with sort of a sexual awakening. She's attracted to certain boys. She's not sure how to deal with it or 
what she's supposed to do, but she remains defiant and, uh, and she does push back. So she's not um, sitting in the corner crying at all in this film. She's, she kind of stands up for herself quite a bit. So this is not a film for everyone. It's not a typical teen comedy like American Pie or Fast Times at Ridgemont High or even something like Mean Girls. Uh, the director said that it was a sort of a response to the TV show The Wonder Years, which was uh, very kind of sentimental and uh, very nostalgic. And he didn't think that was realistic at all about the junior high school experience. So that was his uh, motivation for making this film. Um, there is some offensive language that people uh, might be triggered by, but I think it's accurate as to how the kids this age talk. Uh, they're not very politically correct. And also to the time frame, 1995, even when I was going to junior high and high school in the 60s and 70s, same kind of words they use. Um, there is uh, some dark humor in here, like I said. It's a low-key, deadpan type of humor, more of an observational, character-driven humor as opposed to like set pieces and jokes and stuff like that. Um, my rating for Welcome to the Dollhouse is, again, a rare five guitars out of five. Why guitars? Don's brother, her older brother, has a, a rock band called the Quadratics, and he plays clarinet in this rock band. That tells you something, right? And they get a new lead singer slash lead guitarist who looks like a rock god. He looks kind of like uh, a Jim Morrison type. He's tall, he's muscular, he's got the long hair. Dawn takes one look at him and she is smitten and she becomes obsessed with this guy. So that's why I put guitars in there. Um, I also uh, thought, you know, this has been a long time. Oh, I do want to say that um, I would say this is my favorite teen comedy, if you want to call it that. Let's call it a teen comedy, my favorite teen, com teen comedy, uh, along with um, Election. So if you've seen Election, then you kind of know where I'm coming from and where this film is coming from. Um, I forgot how funny this film was. I hadn't seen it in a long time, and I laughed out loud watching this thing. There's, and I forgot how many memorable lines there are from this film as well. You know, it was a more innocent time. Uh, there were no cell phones uh, there was no social media, so I did think about afterwards how how much worse, how much intense it would have been for someone like Don if there were cell phones and if there was social media, how, how much worse the bullying would have been for her. So something to think about. Um, so what's on this disc? This is a, another Radiance disc. It's Region B. There is a booklet, which is very good. It's about 48 pages long. It has information about uh, the film. There's the booklet there. And uh, information about the film. And it has an interview, an introduction actually by the director, and then an interview. You can see the kind of outfit she wears there. She looks very, very awkward, very young. She was young. And critical reactions to the film. This is a very nicely done booklet. It has uh, several extras. They're all new. There is uh, an extra with the director talking about the making of the film. That's about 16 minutes long. There is an interview with the star, Heather Matarazzo. Uh, this is a new one, so now she's a grown woman. I was really curious to see what she looked like. And uh, that's about 22 minutes long. She said she couldn't watch this film until 20, min 20 minutes, 20 years later, because it was just too cringy for her. Um, now, I will say that she and the director are pretty unique individuals, and I'll leave it at that. There's also a video essay about this film and where it stands in the director's filmography. That's about 16 minutes long, I think. And there is a, a commentary, which I did not listen to. So... Welcome to the Dollhouse. If you're into that kind of offbeat, dark, low-key, deadpan, observational type of humor, highly recommend that one. Where can you see it? You can rent it on Amazon. You can try your local library. And uh, you can also buy it. You can also buy the DVD if you want it to. So feel free to leave a comment or suggestion. Oh, by the way, uh, since it's a Radiance 
uh, disc. It also comes with this thing that fits along the side, inside of it, this thing here. So uh, feel free to leave a comment or a suggestion down below. I want to give a shout out, as the kids say, to those of you who have commented since our last episode. That includes Tina, Roger, Martin, Sid, Michael, Diod, and R. You aren't a killer. How about that name, right? Uh, feel free to leave a, a thumbs up. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Share this with your friends and neighbors. Thank you to our new subscriber, Chuck. Appreciate that. And we are, as of this recording, we are 10 away from our next goal of 450 subscribers. So feel free to subscribe. Um, feel free to follow us on Letterboxd. Subscribing and following us on Letterboxd are free. Um, Letterbox, you, I did, uh, that's where you'll find some, there's a link down below under Letterbox, the Castaway Closet, and that's where you'll find brief reviews I write about other films that I am watching. I just watched a Mae West film. Uh, been a long time since I've, seen, since I've seen one of those. So check that out, and otherwise, hope you like this one. See you next time.